Digital rupee, what does it mean? If a rupee consists of all numbers, how does it really help the common man? Well, to start with, it is going to be used to transfer money between government departments. Sometimes you can think of as money being transferred from, say, central government to one state government. Imagine if certain project needs to be allocated money and that money could be transferred in the form of a digital rupee. As to why digital rupee is better than a, a normal rupee is, that is what is going to be explained in this uh, video. The most important thing to remember is doing something using the digital rupee increases the efficiency of transaction, meaning no loss. Plus, it can also track if the money that is being given is used for the intended purpose, which means, in other words, it will reduce corruption down to zero. It can be brought down to zero. What it needs to do is it needs to take help of an existing technology a proven technology such as blockchain okay so i'm going to give you a bunch of references that you can go and look for and and to understand a little bit more detail what exactly i'm talking about how a digital rupee and blockchain technology come together to give you seamless transactions and a corruption free government gone will be the days when the state government will just try to siphon off money because typically the way it works now is the money gets transferred uh, into the state bank of india account of a particular state and then pilferage starts happening you know fake accounts are created fake project invoices are created and so on and so forth at some places you know the whole money just disappears anyway long story short these are the things that a digital rupee will completely get rid of but it has to be used in the right way and i'm going to take an example and show you how it can be used in the right way now we have been talking about this thing satlej yamuna canal or yamuna satlej link canal you can put either river in the front but the idea here is to use the excess waters in rivers bias and satlej and then have a link canal that will connect these rivers to yamuna so that the people of delhi and others will be able to make use of the excess water so as population of Delhi grows, the need for water is going to grow and therefore this excess water instead of letting it go waste or even letting it go into uh, Pakistan, it can be used by India. So how does this work? This was conceived way back 50 years ago. People were really smart. They thought this should be done and they conceived this plan and this you can see the map that I'm showing here. That was the plan of the Yamuna Satlej Link Canal. The Haryana portion of about uh, 92 kilometers is already laid out waiting for the water from the Punjab side. However, Punjab for political reasons has been dragging its feet. I'll show you where it started. You can take a quick look at how this thing has evolved. 1947, India and Pakistan signed the Indus Water uh, Treaty in 1960 to allow unrestricted use of three rivers, Bias, Ravi and Satlej. And in 1955, an interstate meeting was convened by the central government and they calculated how much water is excess, all that good stuff. And, and there was a uh, agreement in place. At that time, Haryana was not there. The entire state of Punjab and Haryana was, in pl plus I think Himachal Pradesh, was all a single state. And then you had in 1966, Haryana getting created and the remaining state of Punjab felt slighted perhaps and they did not want to share the waters. This is where the bone of contention started, 1966. And then there was some sort of an agreement reached in 1976, but again Punjab was not fully into it. 1982 with much fun, fanfare, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi inaugurated this thing a major portion was to have been completed by 1990s but it has never been completed because you see there are so many problems that were there they they said that okay uh, chandigarh is the capital of punjab so when haryana was carved out they said well haryana will build its own uh, capital city but until then let them share what they have so today even today haryana still has much of its stuff in Chandigarh. So 
these kinds of things are are what becomes a problem and and it has never been solved the uh, accountant general office is in haryana as far as i know and uh, in fact what is the capital of haryana does anyone know not gurgaon it is not gurgaon okay so you get the idea so what happened was the 92 kilometers of canal has already been built by haryana and let me show you how it is intended to run if you look at it closely here when where it enters haryana that part has been completed and where it is waiting for punjab to complete its portion to come from yamuna satluj link head and this is this nangal dam which is the border between punjab and himachal pradesh for that water to come plus ahead on uh, on top of it ravi waters are also supposed to come so there is a fair amount of work that needs to be done on punjab side now you can see that once that water comes in to haryana it splits into two parts or perhaps more than that one part goes to western yamuna canal and it will join uh, yamuna uh, before delhi another one proceeds down and goes all the way into delhi is a delhi branch you also have a sirsa branch and then there is an augmentation canal which can go all the way down to haryana so haryana will be able to get a very good supply of water well now where things stand is in 2004 let me go back to the next slide in 2004 punjab assembly passed a law which terminated the satluj yamuna link agreement however the other states having invested so much money they went back to the supreme court and the supreme court set aside this law but still 18 years have passed and nothing has happened now supposing the modi government were to say let's kick start this project because well first of all punjab needs money lots of money they have mismanaged their funds so let's say if punjab says well, we need about 10000 crores for the state uh, you know other things in the state the the modi government can put a contingent saying fine but we will allocate i'm just giving some numbers it doesn't mean that is the correct number it could be a magnitude of it might say okay i am going to give you 5000 crores for executing your portion of this satluj yamuna link canal and i'm sure the government will have something similar to sign with haryana also because they were they have to do some more work to get the water into delhi the idea is to get more water into delhi delhi needs more water so what happens 5000 crores digital rupee is minted and it would have a signature that you can use to track how that 5000 crores is going to be used let us just say i'm very very oversimplifying this punjab gets the digital 5000 crores rupees and then it will be tracked by the government of india because it would have allocated it in a certain way let us say 2000 crores for construction material 1000 crores for labor and another 2000 crores for equipment and any other land acquisition they may be required again these numbers don't matter they are not making sense but the idea here is to understand how this allocated money can be tracked by the government using a digital rupee so what happens the digital rupee of this 5000 crores it will be sorting think of the node the starting node as coming from say uh, rbi or uh, the central government where it issues the 5000 rupee digital rupees now let's say that the punjab government is constrained to use this thing only in the way the budget has been allocated i mean the allocation the center doesn't have to strictly say that so much money in this bucket so much money in this bucket so much money in this bucket punjab government can also do that but the point here is whoever does it the total doesn't change and once allocated and agreed to then the government of india can track on a daily basis where the money is being spent whether it's spent being spent in the right places and how fast it's being spent so all these things will improve the efficiency and there will be no wastage in this particular case wastage means corruption why do i say that let's say the construction material consists of bricks mortar cement and and wood and so on and so forth now the government of india can say okay these are the people who are the approved uh, suppliers of this and then what they can do is the the punjab government can go and draw that much amount of cement or wood or bricks whatever it is and because it's an approved supplier the government will know that so much worth of 
the digital rupee has been routed into the project through this particular vendor. You get the point? So the government has given the first original money and now it can also track how this money is getting being, being spent. This kind of transparency was not available, will not be available if you use the standard procedure that has been in place for many, many years now. This will make sure that along the way there is no pilferage. Even at the end point, if the government is able to track all the end suppliers, then the uh, message is near zero, near zero. So what happens with the digital rupee? So I told you that since the government has an approved list of vendors, those people will be able to convert the digital rupee into fiat currency like rupees and so on and so forth because they need to pay salaries, they need to pay their vendors and so on and so forth. But you see the loop will get closed. So very easily somebody can see the pilferage. For example, the cement company cannot arbitrarily raise prices in order to try and siphon off some money. Those things can be fixed. And the companies that get selected by the government will stand to make good money because they'll have a guaranteed demand over a certain period and that would help them plan their businesses better. So it's a win-win situation for everyone if something like this were to happen. Finally, what does this do? State governments can no longer eat any of these things. Second, once a couple of projects execute this way, the, the impetus will be much more for doing more projects using the digital rupee. And at some point in time, this will start impacting the fiat currency circulation. And why, why do I say that? Because many things can be done just by transferring money electronically instead of transferring money by cash. Just like the way you are doing UPI payment. When you do a UPI payment to say buy groceries also, the money goes from your bank account to the uh, the shopkeeper's uh, bank account. There is no physical money transfer. What happens? Fake currency goes away. That is the biggest takeaway from a digital rupee. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.